So imagine we wanted to drop an unguided bomb. And by unguided, I mean that it's essentially got no guided system. It's just going to follow its natural ballistic trajectory when it's released. And as you might imagine, if you're going to drop one of those bombs, you probably want to know where it's going to land. And it turns out where it lands has a lot to do with how fast the aircraft's going and how high it is. So let's go ahead and look at an unguided bomb drop from an MQ-9. So first, a couple stats for an MQ-9. Um, typical velocity would be around 180 miles per hour. We're going to go ahead and convert that into feet per second because that's going to be more convenient for us unit-wise. So it's going to be 264 feet per second. And a typical altitude for MQ-9 would be around 25,000 feet. So we'll go ahead and use that. And this is really all the information that we need. So we'll start off by looking at the vertical position of the bomb once it's released. And that vertical position we could find as the initial altitude plus the initial velocity times time plus the acceleration over 2 times time squared. And of course, we're dividing by 2 on the acceleration um, because we integrated acceleration twice to get this. So to plug in some numbers for these values, our vertical position, we'll call y of t, and that's going to equal our initial altitude of 25,000 feet plus our initial velocity, which is 0 because we're just dropping it. And finally, our acceleration, which is going to be negative 32.2 feet per second squared because it's going downwards. And of course, we're um, neglecting any wind or drag in this case, so it'll just be a continual acceleration downwards for this bomb. So our equation for y of t is 25,000 minus 32.2 over 2 t squared. Next, we'll go ahead and look at our horizontal position, which is going to be our initial position, plus our initial horizontal velocity times time, plus our our horizontal acceleration over 2 times time squared. And we'll call our horizontal position x of t. And our initial position we'll arbitrarily call 0 because that makes things easy. Our initial velocity will pull from down here, that um, horizontal speed of our plane. And our acceleration horizontally is just going to be 0 because, of course, this unguided bomb also is unpropelled. So that gives us our equation for x of t which is just going to be 264t. All right, now that we've got our x and our y as a function of t, we can go ahead and do the fun part, which is plotting this out. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up Desmos here. And what we have down here, this would represent, this horizontal axis would represent our horizontal distance, whereas this vertical axis would represent our altitude. And we can go ahead and plug those in here. So I'm just going to plug in my x of t first, which was just 264t. I'm going to plug in my y value, which was 25,000 minus 32.2 over 2 times t squared. And now we've got our first point up here, but we can go ahead and adjust our t to go from 0 to 40 seconds. And that gives us sort of that whole trajectory here that the bomb would travel after releasing from the MQ-9. Now the cool thing about making this in a parametric equation is I could just take this whole thing and I can actually, I'm going to change this variable to t1 instead of t here. And if I do that and I make a slider here, I'm gonna, let's go from um, 0 to 40 again. And if I do that, you can see if I animate this, you can see what the x and y position will be for each second as the bomb is dropped. And so, of course, that's what path the um, bomb would follow. Let's go ahead and watch that again. Starts up here. So this is the this is the nice thing about parametric equations, is that for any t value, I can see what is my x and y. But we don't have to leave this in terms of t. We can't actually convert it into just x and y, and it's really not too bad to do that. We just notice that here we have um, x in terms of t, so we can just kind of reverse that and solve for t in terms of x. And doing that, we get t equals x over 264. And then we can just take this right here and plug that in for t. And doing that, we can get y of x, which is just going to be 25,000 minus 32.2 over 2 times x over 264 that we just subbed in squared. And going back to Desmos, you can see we can actually plot that out too. So I'm going to just take the same thing here. This is my y value. And I'll just say y of x is equal to that. But instead of t here, let's put x over 264. 
And you can see when I do that, I get in this overlapping function in the black here. See, it overlaps it perfectly. The only thing here is you can see that this um, the blue is going from 0 to 40 seconds, which so it's only covering this certain x, y positions, whereas this, when we go to y as a function of x, we're losing that time information. And so we just get this full, this full line that doesn't really have a, a start or a stop. It just keeps going. So we can often represent parametric functions as y in terms of x, but sometimes when we do that, we lose some information, and it's not quite as handy as you can see in this case. Let's go ahead and clear this out. And let's look at this um, in a little bit different perspective. So we looked at the MQ-9 already, but why don't we just throw in a couple more different types of aircraft and just for fun here. Let's um, say an A-10. It um, goes a bit faster. Say a um, typical speed of 350 miles per hour. Convert that to 513 feet per second. And a typically lower altitude at 15,000 feet. We'll take a look at that, and then we'll take a look at F-16, which um, is quite a bit faster. Typical speed of 600 miles per hour and 880 feet per second at an altitude of 20,000 feet. So if a bomb was dropped from each of these aircraft at the same time, which of them is going to go the furthest? Which of them will land first? Well, if we plot it out, it looks like this. So we got our MQ-9 on top here in the blue, and then we got our A-10 here on the bottom, and our F-16 here in the middle in the green. And you can see that our F-16 clearly is dropping the bomb the farthest because that speed is the greatest at 600 miles per hour. So this is actually about, let's see, about four miles further than the MQ-9's bomb dropped if you convert this um, feet into, into miles here. Fun fact, since we are neglecting air resistance, if this speed was actually high enough, this bomb would never hit the ground. It would simply orbit around the Earth. But that is another subject. Next question was, which of these bombs would land first? So thankfully, we can, we've got this in parametric form, so we can go ahead and show that. So I can animate T. And as you can see, this A-10 is going to drop first, followed by the F-16, and lastly the MQ-9, which shouldn't come as a huge surprise because we modeled the downward acceleration as constant. So our A-10, of course, was the lowest, so it was going to hit first. Let's show that again. And our F-16 was the next highest, and it hit second, and our highest altitude aircraft, the MQ-9 bomb hit last. Another item of interest here, you can see they have sort of different impact angles as they land, which um, might be important if you're trying to hit maybe the side of a building or a cave. But if, of course, if you're dropping dumb bombs, then you're probably not that picky. But um, this concludes our look at using parametric equations to find the ballistic trajectory of a unguided bomb. And I hope it was helpful.